It's a full week of 100 mile ultra marathon training, peak week edition. Let's go. Hello my friends and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Lisa Lenick and I am officially less than five weeks out from my first 100 mile ultra marathon attempt. I say attempt because you never know if you're gonna complete these things, but I am getting so close, I can almost taste it. So we were five weeks out as of Friday, it is Monday, and these are my last two big weeks of training. Now I'm traveling next weekend for work to Colorado. So this is my last full week kind of home during the peak in prep of my training for my 100 mile ultra marathon, which is no business. 100 October 25th. So I'm focusing on making the most out of this week at home where I can have some guaranteed training in and really, really get in the miles that I need. Now I'm getting a range this week between 60 to 70 miles. I ran a 53 mile ultra marathon as part of a 12 hour time race, not this past weekend, but the weekend before. So I just spent the last week recovering a lot and I do want to make sure that my body feels good and I want to push it and get in that training, but not too hard or too far beyond what it needs to be. So we're starting out this week with a run. It is a rainy day. I procrastinated this run all day long. If I'm being honest, I was very unmotivated to do it. And I was very, very focused on getting some some manuscript writing done. And if I'm focused on writing science, then my goodness, we are going to stop everything to actually write that science. But I'm actually excited now to get this in now that my big brain tasks of the day are done and I can head out and it's actually rainy, but it's kind of cooler. And I feel like it's going to be actually a great day to kind of run in the rain a little bit. So first things first, I'm going to crush a warm up here. I have been working very closely with my friend who's also a physical therapist who's been helping me out this year. And one of the things we were really prioritizing in my last less than five weeks going on this fourth week out of training here is really making sure that we are keeping my body strong. So I actually didn't have a ton of pain in that 50 miler with anything that I have going on with my left leg, but I did have some ankle issues with trying out some new shoes, which I am, it's a whole other story for another day here on this channel. And I'm going to simply just make sure I'm doubly down on all of my rehab type strengthening exercises, including my running warmups here in these last few weeks of training. My strength training is dropping a little bit. We're only gonna lift two days this week. Quite honestly, the volume of running with the frequency of lifting and my work demands is just too much right now and something I had to give, but I'm still gonna make sure that I'm making time for that. And one of the ways I do that is just building it in to before my run. So let's jump in, let's get this warm up going, and then let's go crush eight to 10 miles here today on road. Let's hit it. All right, we're gonna get started first with a little bit of warm up here. Hello, Ms. Kona, can you sit? So as I mentioned, a lot of my warm up is some of my rehabby type prehabby things that I do um, with my physical therapist, which is actually when I referred this physical therapist inside the TLM app um, for referrals for clients for virtual ones. My friend Claire and my friend Taylor um, both are available for that. We're really fantastic and have helped me a ton over the years working through running injuries. But right now I am most worried about my left leg. Um, in general, that's my problem leg. Like I've had issues with this since I was born. Um, I, my leg was like kind of twisted in my mom and I have um, hypermobility uh, spectrum disorder, undiagnosed or confirmed ELO Stanlers. I know a lot of people ask me that, I just never got the genetic testing. And so hypermobility is not always the most optimal for running ultra marathons. Alas, I persist, but I am trying to do what I can to keep my body in one piece um, going into my big day and race coming up here soon. So that's why I'm doing a lot of that. But if you are looking for specifics though on how to warm up for your run, we actually have a killer video coming soon. So if you aren't subscribed, hit subscribe here so you don't miss that out. Breaking down exactly my approach to running warm ups and how to program them and approach them for yourself. All right, what it feels like now a million years later after my warm up, I'm gonna get my belt on, I've got some water, I'm gonna bring some gels. I need to start, you know, reinforcing really that intra run nutrition on all of these runs that are over an hour, hour and a half long, the rest of training, making sure that gut is good and tolerating lots of carbs, lots of sugars and all the things while training. Um, so I'll just stick these here in my running belt. I have been enjoying these You Can't Edge ones. I know some people, 
are hit or miss with you can. I haven't, didn't love their um, mix, uh, the drink mix as much, but I do actually like these. I think that they take like, taste like Pez. And so um, I do like the fact that they have kind of more water to them. So you don't really have to drink water with them, but they're more viscous. And I do have them linked in my Amazon page, which is linked in the notes here below. All right, let's hit it. All right, Kona just ran another 5K. This time she PR'd it by five whole minutes. And she's gonna cool down and get some water. Get her a little drinky drink. She's definitely gonna nap and I'm gonna go finish the rest of my run, so let's do it. I'm not gonna lie, y'all, I did not wanna do this run today, but having 1,800 calories in you, wait until the afternoon, cool drizzly rain, and electronic music playing is such the vibe. I'm actually loving this right now, so hopefully I'm still loving it for the rest of these miles when we get four miles in, but some days, you know, you don't wanna do it. Once you get out the door and you get moving, it ends up being really magical. And I always think about how many runs I've almost skipped that have had been really magical because I didn't buy into the I don't want a voice inside my head. So let's keep going. All right, we're a little over 50 or so minutes in. So we're gonna hit this jump, toss back about 20 grams of carbs. All right, we are back home. We ran nine and a half miles at like a 10, 13 pace. I feel like my pace was all over the place between running with Kona and then I'm trying not to get into my head too much about this, but my ankle that I said was kind of bothering me now feels more Achilles, which is this side that I was injured on. And it's just, oh, I'm trying not to be too stressed about this so close to a race. Long story short is I, my foot has grown and flattened from race training and I had to run the race around a few weeks ago in a different pair of shoes. Um, I ran in the ultras that have the four millimeter drop because I've run in ultras before and they have a wider toe box and it has a drop, which I need to drop now. But the laces I think were like tied kind of tight and weird. I felt like I was running like very flipper footed -y, and I'm just going to try to not to ca catastrophize. Um, I'm going to just try to continue to do my rehab on the side monitor any sensations for the next day, see how things feel. I cut this at nine and a half because I was like, you know what, we're good, we're done. Um, but hopefully it's just a little blip. My body's so sensitive to so many different things that sometimes things aren't injury versus just being sensation. Hypermillibility is very finicky, but all that to say, done for the day. Um, felt pretty good otherwise, uh, especially running 10 miles, nine days post running 50, um, feeling like I'm pretty recovered. I'm honestly really hungry, so I'm gonna smash some dinner, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow. All right, day two, it is Tuesday. I'm about to hit one of my two full body lifts. I recently made a decision to bump down from three um, lifts per week down to two. It was just becoming too much, honestly, with my work schedule and everything I have to do with also having to run so much. More of a logistically easier thing on me because running is the main priority right now as a peak and prep for this race. And that's the beauty of something we actually have built right into my programs in the List Method app. We have a program called Race that you can do in your training and peaking and prepping for races and events. That is two full body lifts per week with an optional third day. So if you can get the third day in, great. If if you can't, you only can get two days in per week. It's totally optional and you get everything you need within just those two days. So I am kind of doing the same right now. I wanna show you that it's okay to have to bump down when you're you know, preparing and peaking and prepping for a race. So I'm gonna hit my first full body lift of the week right now. So let's get into it. All right, so I'm opening up my list method app here. I'm opening up my workout and I'm going to kind of get an idea of what I'm getting into today before I get started. This is actually very similar to what I've been doing the last week anyway. Um, but it just helps me kind of get an idea of what I'm getting into today so I can just jump right into it. Kona, good girl. Hey, Kona, can you sit? Good girl. So we are doing some trap bar reps supersetted with immediately going into two uh, seated two box jumps. So this is something called contrast training where essentially you are pairing together um, heavy standard weightlifting with some sort of power plyometric based movement. Really fun, we mix this into TLM sometimes, just kind of mixing in here as a way to keep some power in my training. Um, my deadlifts aren't as heavy as they typically are. We switch to trap bar just to kind of why not? It's not my main goal right now to switch these things. Honestly, I did speed reps most of the summer anyway, coming off of all of my travel. So it's just a way for me to load a little bit more. We'll also then combine it with something to maintain some power as I head into this peak block of training. So nothing fancy, but kind of fancy and a little fun. All 
All right, we've got some easy low RPE back squats right now. I added back squats in myself the last two weeks coming off my trip and following my race and basically told no, like I'm doing them, so put them in. Um, but honestly, I'm being frank with you guys. My strength at this point is not where I was hoping it would be at this year. Not really because of running, actually. Like this has been the best balance of lifting and running I feel like I've ever had in my years of hybrid training. But uh, the three weeks of travel in May, the three weeks fully off lifting in July, June into the first week of July, the two weeks off beginning of September, um, easing back into lifting while also ramping up my mileage during July. It just, travel really got in the way of a lot of that consistent progressive heavy lifting that I like to do. I had to be really careful because of my hypermobility to not overload ramping up lifting intensity and volume while also bringing up my running volume. And so I kind of just kept a lot of speed work in, uh, box squats, lighter reps, just because it's just, I had to manage that across things. I would have liked to think this year would have looked different if I didn't travel like 15 times this entire year leading into this. but. It is what it is, but I'm still here, I'm still showing up, and I'm still doing it, and that's what matters most. So, here's this workout. All right, post lift. we are out here on a run. I was feeling a little hesitant about my Achilles, trying to see how things are tolerance today. I did power up a hot walk up a hill instead of running, just reducing the stress on it, taking this nice and easy, kind of going by feel. Hoping yesterday was just kind of a fluke of like, oh, we're bringing a lot after a week of deloading and my body freaks out very easily about things, but fingers crossed, today feels good so far. Um, that'll keep feeling that way and we'll be okay. Let's do it. All right, seven miles done and dusted. Honestly, fingers crossed, feeling pretty good. Minimal pain there on the Achilles. I slowed it down because running slower puts, it, puts less strain and stress on your Achilles. It's something that I did when I was coming back from Achilles injury. Um, I also stopped at home about five miles in to get a candy snack because I actually ended up taking walk breaks because my sugar was dropping, not even because of my foot. So whatever, we slowed down today, seven miles, I think like a 10.50 pace, easy breezy, felt super good, which is great going into the rest of the week. Only indication I have from my body is we need to bump up those carbs. So I'm gonna go crush some dinner and I'll catch you tomorrow. All right, my friends, it is Wednesday, day three of the week. Transparently, I forget every single Wednesday that I have this 5.30 meeting with my postdoc advisor. These used to be at 3.30 when I lived in Colorado, and I will put off my run until the afternoon and then go, oh my God, I have to get this in before the meeting without fail every week. So right now it is 3.28, my meeting's at 5.30. So I'm gonna do the quickest warm up of all time. Kona wants to run very badly, so I'm gonna take her on her little run. Anything to say? She wants to eat the microphone. And then I'm gonna finish up whatever else I can get in in a reasonable amount of time. So let's hit it. Kona, you're such a basic fall girl matching the leaves. One of you, your Kona. Little Miss Bean, getting after it. Love and life. After Monday's ankle Achilles freak out and this rainy day and get down here just hitting some heart leg intervals, nothing too crazy, but I've been trying to practice pushing hey, just a little, going to my 100, so it's not unfamiliar if I have to push or just running on flat becomes less fatiguing. Um, and I don't know, just think about the rain and pushing and the playlist, it's just like, Perfect. Like I'm freaking doing this kind of feeling today. Feels good. It was a good run. I needed this. I really needed this. So let's keep going. Let's keep pushing. All right, done and dusted. I'm actually so happy. I ended up getting nine miles in. I thought with being short on time, I'd only get eight. Um, but that just, that run just felt so good. I did about nine miles and I did 
on and off, like fart licky intervals of like three and a half ish minutes on, three and a half ish minutes off. There's a few in there that were a little bit off of that just because of intersections and traffic and having to like extend them. But I didn't have any formal workout going to this. I have been doing these uh, tempo y threshold uh, kind of continuous, a little bit higher effort intervals the last few weeks of training leading into this simply just to get some speed on my legs after building volume all fall. But otherwise, I'm gonna be late for my meeting. Tomorrow's a rest day, much needed. So I'll catch you guys on Friday. All right, my friends, it is lift number two of the week, another full body lift. It is Friday. I have this lift here, and then I'm going to do stair stepping afterwards to get in some vert training for the week on this rainy Friday afternoon. Transparently, I procrastinate this much of the day, um, but I really just wanna get it all done with. So let's just hop in and get it started. I got my lift started on my list method app here. I'm gonna get on the bike, warm up a little bit, and then just get moving and get this lift done. So the only compound I have today are these hang power snatches. Um, as always, the list method does not include Olympic weightlifting except for blocks 10 on in our Metcon program, but we are chatting about adding it in to our programs as an option for 2025. Um, so if that's something you'd be interested in, let me know below. But I have a few sets of just working up um, to 95 pounds, nothing crazy. We remove snatches and cleans, even though I had a huge power clean goal for this year because I traveled like 15 weeks of this year and that just really got in the way of everything as I've talked about. Is what it is, it's a choice that I made, um, but it was the lowest hanging fruit to remove with training and made the most sense, but it's a fun, easy thing. Snatches aren't super heavy when you're adding in this kind of just re-adaptation work in, coming back into it, especially this late in the game. So it's a fun thing to add in. And I do love snatches, they do humble you. I feel like they're the ultra running equivalent of a, of a lift, so. All right, lift number two, done and dusted. I got quite a pump there at the very, I can't even like close my fist at the very end from all that bro work. Um, I'm gonna head to the gym, finish up some either incline running or stair stepping, just depending on what's available and wrap up this Friday of training. So let's do it. I finish every video by saying like, let's go and let's do it. And I don't know any better transitions and I'm sorry for being the way that I am. I'm just gonna put pictures of Kona in between every clip from now on. That's my new transition. Sweet little bean. Yeah. All right, we are back home and done and dusted with that workout. An hour lift and an hour and 20 of stair stepping. I got in 3,300 feet of gain there. Um, feeling pretty good about that. Kept it pretty easy, zone two, and ready for a massive weekend of training. What about you, Kona? Are you ready for a big weekend of training too? Huh? Yeah. You're not running 20 miles. You don't got it in you. You don't got that dog in you. Can you get down? Let's go eat dinner. All right, my friends, we are finally at the trail. It is literally like 10.04. I am a dilly dally queen today. I slept until 7.30. I had a walk Kona. I had nothing ready. I feel like I had no breakfast. I had to go and get something from the gas station to eat. Uh, one and a half Wawa pretzels fueling this run today. I feel a little bit chaotic, but we're gonna use my car as an aid station. Um, and I've got all of my stuff ready. So we're gonna get ready. And you can't really rush running for four to five hours, but you gotta get it started. So let's do it. All right, so we're trying out a few new things today. One, I'm doing the unflavored elements. Um, two, I'm bringing back the Los Sportivas that I have been running in. I just got them in a size up instead of those ultras that I don't think my feet really, I don't know, they might've been too big, ironically, despite my shoe issues. So I got a bigger size in those Los Sportivas that I have been running in the last two years. I'm trying the naked elements. Um, Element makes a basically unflavored, just salt packet that you can use. And then I have a caffeine pill in there today. And these are things that I have decided after doing that 50 miler, that 12 hour race, little last minute tweaks and improvements and trials to the things that I've been doing and know work uh, this year. So I got 
lots of scratch. Um, Gatorade yeah. always works really well for me. Knowing drinking caffeine doesn't seem to be doing the trick, so I was trying caffeinated pills and going back to the shoes I know that work. So, last big trial day. I'm an hour in, like 4.95 miles. Honestly, feeling pretty good, taking it easy. Um, not super taxing the body, just kind of cruising along. It is um, pretty wet, but not as muddy as I thought it would be, so I'm very grateful for that. A lot of down wet leaves and wet rocks, which I actually think is a good thing for some practice because it's very likely for a fall um, ultra that there's gonna be a lot of down leaves and they could be wet or they could be wet rocks. So just taking it slow in those sections so I don't really trip or roll on my ankle or anything like that. It's late in the game. Really, I'm just out here to get the training in today. There is no rush, kind of working out the last weeks and time on beat is the name of the game today and this weekend. So feeling pretty good so far. Mental spirits are actually pretty good for not really wanting to do this today and I'm gonna keep on rolling. Okay, I have this 90 gram bottle of scratch. I probably should have had more carbs, but I just was so full I ate half a second half of a, of a Wawa pretzel on the way here. So I was still pretty full from that. Um, let me get, this is my second bottle of scratch that I spilled half a third of it on my freaking shorts. So I'm gonna fill this with Gatorade. Longer than planned. I'm struggling today. I'm not on the trail, but. All right, let's get back at it. All right, we're a little over two hours in and we're under 10 miles of the day so far. It is getting gross. Oh my God, I'm sweating. Just completely moisture in the air everywhere. Um, I just stopped right there to Oh, there's some deer. Talk about terrible situational awareness, Alyssa. Oh my God, my camera screen is so blurry. Hello guys, nice to meet you. Um, double tied my shoes, put them back in those back lace locks. I think that that's the key for me with my ankles. I did that with my road shoes this week when I was having that Achilles pain. It went pretty much all went away. So I think I just need that little bit of support, but feeling good. Took my 100 milligram caffeine pill. Honestly, just trying to turn off my brain for the fact that I feel like run for three more hours. So we're just kind of getting into like, just focus, be in the moment, and not force it, just be in it. So, keep going. Well, it's officially started to torrentially downpour. It went from no chance of rain today to 30, to 40, to 100. At least we know, if it rains on race day, we have practice running in the rain. It's not too bad, really, not too bad. Just taking slow in the leaves and the rocks, but it's so hot and humid anyway that I can't really tell the difference. It kind of feels nice, honestly. All right, well, I'm at like, 15 and three fourths of a mile. It started to rain pretty hard. Um, the trail's kind of getting a little sweaty in places, which isn't ideal, um, not just for running, because that's fine. I mean, I've ran in rain and mud before, but it's not really suggested to run on trail when it's muddy like that. It can, can degrade the trail quality. I'm gonna try to go out the other way that is a little less muddy single track and see if we can squeak out on four, at least get to 20 and maybe finish up some at home or just call today and see what we get in tomorrow. Um, but I would like to not leave trail or be done until I at least, would might be to never make a YouTube video on this road again. I would like to get at least to 20 before I call today or go home or be done from trail, so. All right, we are wrapping up this run. We're at like 23.43 right now. Should finish back at my car right around 24, headed back out this way and sun came out, stopped raining. This trail is completely runnable, and I just said, you know what? Let's do a full out and back loop to that other parking lot, back to my car. Um, I probably could have brought a little more food if I knew I was gonna do that, but I feel actually pretty fine, like physically feel good considering running 24 miles. Um, my legs are tired, but I did run 53 miles two weeks ago, and I've already ran like 30 miles this week. So that makes sense, but I feel mostly fine, which means I probably ate enough, which is good. And yeah, we're gonna wrap it up on this long run today and then go smash some food and get ready for a big back-to-back -to -back training session tomorrow. All 
All right, my friends, we are on the final day of this week of training. This is my Sunday back-to-back -back long run training day. I would like to get in somewhere between 12 and 15 miles worth of collective training between running and or some vertical training, whether that's incline running and hiking or stair stepping, just depending on what's open at the gym. And I'm gonna start with a quick warm up. Kona's gonna go out for a little 5K run. She is itching to run. It's been raining here the last few days. She's so excited. She's been running around. She knows she's going running, so she's been super excited here. So I'm gonna get warming up, take Kona for her run, go finish up the rest of my road miles, and then hit the gym to wrap it up on this very, very, very big peak week of training, which I'm super excited to get done with, but I literally have to run again tomorrow. So ain't no rest for the wicked. Let's jump in and get this day done with. All right, my friends, and that is a wrap on this week of training. We ended up with 65 miles. I want to say something like 8,000 feet of vertical gain of climbing two full body lifts. I actually cut that stair step shorter than I planned. I felt like I was just eating so much food on that run and on that stair step. And no matter how much I ate, I just could not keep up with my body. And I just got to a point where I felt like I was just digging the hole deeper than it needed to be. So we called that 40 minutes. Um, I still feel really good. 13 hours on feet this week of training is huge. Um, I am definitely feeling it. I'm very tired. I ordered $50 worth of Chipotle delivery for me and Regis. Um, that's on its way right now so i'm gonna wrap up this week of training doing what is most necessary at this point in time and that is stuffing my face with chipotle and laying on my couch for the rest of the day so thank you so much for tuning in i am so close to my first 100 mile attempt no business 100 and i would love for you to subscribe and stick around and hang out here for all the content leading up to this and the race day documentary which is coming as well if there's anything you would love to see um, or have a question for me that you'd like me to answer in a video regarding ultra training, 100 mile training, any of that stuff, let me know in the comments below. And otherwise, I will catch you guys on the next one. We are so close. Thank you for being here.